When deciding on an altitude to fly in the 727, we generally ask to either fly at the maximum altitude, an optimum altitude, or an altitude given in the question. We're going to start by finding the maximum altitude of the aircraft based off the cruise thrust limits. This is generally what limits the 727, and the information can be found on page 2-14 of your 727 manual. If you haven't already highlighted the page I have here, I definitely recommend doing that now because it just makes things so much easier down the track. Now I've hollowed all my eastern levels in green and all my western levels in red. So it's really easy to remember that because it's like the nav lights on the aircraft. On the right hand side it's green, left hand side it's red. Looking a little bit more at page 2-14, we're just going to point out a few things on it. The far left column is flight levels. Now you notice it's only 4139, etc, etc. It, it doesn't have things like flight level 400 or 36 or 34. That's because the 727 is a non-RBSM aircraft. So these are the only levels you're allowed to fly at. So don't be concerned about flight level 360, for example. 727 is not allowed to fly there. Next column is the cruise schedule. So depending what cruise schedule we have, we're going to have different data. So we'll look at that a little bit later on. The TAT4 ISA column, you won't need it. It's, it's the same information you'll find in 3-106, but... Um, 3-106 has so much more information, it's a lot easier to read. So if you do find yourself looking at this column, chances are you're in the wrong spot. Just ignore it and move on. So you shouldn't have to worry about the column ever. The optimum weight is for optimum altitude calculations, which we're going to be looking at in this section, maybe a couple of videos down the track. And then the last section here is your cruise thrust limit. So this is what we're going to be looking at for uh, the maximum altitude questions. Now, we're going to be looking in the maximum altitude uh, video about what this weight actually means. For a quick explanation of what it is, these are the maximum weights you're allowed at the start of that cruise. So most of the time, that's going to be top of climb position. So we take off a brakes release weight, we burn some fuel as we climb, and we reach our top of climb position at a certain weight. And that top of climb position is also the start of the cruise, so it's start zone weight. That's the weight we're looking here. So we just have to make sure we're less than that weight. Now, because this is based off start zone weight, we've got to be very careful in what route sector wind and temp we use. So if we're going to be flying around flight level 350, say, we've got to make sure we're using 340 data for that uh, ISA deviation that you find up here. If we're going to be cruising at 310, we're probably going to be looking at the 300 route sector wind and temp, et cetera, et cetera. So we just have to make sure the route sector wind and temp is relevant for whatever level we're looking at. In the next video, we're gonna go through this in a little bit more detail. But right now, that's kind of all the information you have to know about 2-14. So definitely worth highlighting it the way I have now, and then we'll move on with the other videos.